All right, I'm taking you all to school today. It's Duplex 101. We are going to do a whole bunch of tests to see if we can, well, learn anything. All right, everybody, class is in session. Sit your asses down, quit passing around notes to each other, and quit picking on Timmy. He's had enough for one day. Duplex rounds. What is a duplex, and what even are we going to be 101-ing about? Well, let me tell you what we're doing first of all. Duplex rounds, the way we're testing this stuff out, is going to be with two different powders in the same cartridge. There's another version where you put two different projectiles in the same cartridge. That's not what we're doing. We're doing two different powders. So let's get that out, you know, straight right away. We have to know what caliber, what cartridge we are even duplexing in the first place. Now, the test medium we are going to be using is this Colt Single Action Army Uberti replica, Uberti Cattleman, with the 7.5 inch long barrel. 45 Colt cartridge. That's what we're going to be using you know, for all of our testing. Now, as for the powders we're going to be duplexing together, we are going to use these two. Winchester's 231 ball powder and Hogsden's 777 3F black powder substitute. Now, if you know anything about 777, if you've ever used it before, you'll know that 3F in particular says right on the bottle, caution, do not use 777 3F in a cartridge. Only 2F they have low data for. They don't want you to use this in a cartridge. Well, let me tell you, not only are we using it in a cartridge, we're mixing it with other, you know, smokeless powder. So if some warning label put on by some lawyer somewhere that you've never met before is enough to stop you from doing something, this is the wrong channel for you. Because if this gets you a little nervous, you don't even want to see what we're about to do. And what that is, is a whole bunch of science. We are going to make up a whole bunch of loads, shoot them all, chronograph them, document them, and see if there's any weird anomalies, if there's any, you know, clear patterns. If it's a linear gain as powder increases, or if when you mix the two together, things just are kind of weird, right? Now, this is the load we're going to start with. 777-3F, we are going to be starting with 30 grains as the base, you know, line with a 250 grain bullet. And what we're going to be changing is the amount of W231 ball powder in the case. Now this is going to be on the bottom, 777 on top of it, right? So this is going to act kind of like a, a booster for the 777. Now we're going to start out with zero grains, so a pure 777 load. Then we're going to add one grain at a time until we get to four grains. We're going to, you know, see what the velocities are and see if there's anything strange happening. So we got our numbers all laid out right here and how much we increased by plus or minus right you know it's just kind of a ballpark but you know 56 plus or minus feet per second greater 85 63 right a fairly linear increase per grain of w231 until we get to four grains that's only plus or minus 16. that's you know a giant outlier right there that's kind of strange so what could be happening? Well, we need more testing to find out. Let's do another load. So here's our new load. We're still using the four grains of the W231 because that's kind of what we're trying to figure out what's going on with. But we're changing up the 777, going to only use 25 grains instead of the 30. We're going to drop it by five grains, see what that does. Theoretically, this should be you know, a fair bit less, right? In terms of velocity.
And here is our result. Now, interesting thing to note, even though we dropped our 777 charge, the main, you know, producer of energy, down by 5 grains, the, you know, feet per second only went to 19, plus or minus. I mean, originally with 30 grains, it was 16. That's, what, 3 feet per second difference? That's, you know, that could be just from one round to the next. We're only using two rounds of average, right? They're basically identical, even though this one's got a smaller powder charge at the end of the day. Now that's interesting. So in light of that, I've added one more column to this, you know, big long list we got here. Zero grains. What does just a 25 grain charge of 777 do on its own? Then we can use that to compare to the rest of it. And here is our result. Now, interesting enough, 940, 918, that's plus or minus 39 feet per second from the 30 grain load we shot earlier. So this number is a greater difference dropping by five grains on its own than it was dropping five grains when it is duplexed together. Interesting stuff. Now, let me start a whole new column of testing. So here is our next set of loadings. Now, as you can see, we already got two of them filled in because we've already tested them over here. What we are going to do is we're going to take this 777-3F and go from 20 grains all the way down to 40 grains in 5 grain increments to see if there's any, you know, kind of weird anomalies just with this powder alone. It doesn't want it to be put in cartridges. They say so right on the bottle. So I want to see if this stuff might be a little finicky, and if that might be why we're seeing our anomalies down there. If it's just due to the 777's, you know, innate unreliability. Maybe, who knows, maybe adding duplexing to it is making it more reliable, at least up until the 4 grain mark. Alright, let's take a look and see what we can find out. Oh, wow. And here are quite frankly interesting results. Now, starting out with 20 grains, we have like zero compression. Like it, the bullet's not even seated against the power. And as a result, we've got some pretty abysmal performance. Although the, you know, spread on it is not bad at all. Jumping up to 25 grains, we gain 197 plus or minus feet per second with a 5 grains. This stuff is definitely, you yeah, know, temperamental, let's say. But that is a giant improvement. Going to 30 grains, however, we only see, like we said, 39 feet per second. Which is kind of weird because that's where we have been doing all of our testing, is that, that 30 grain, 25 grain zone. So, you know, that's uh, an interesting thing that's going to come here in just a second. Moving from 30 to 35, however, we gain another 111 feet per second. Massive gains for 5 grains of powder. And another 102 grain, or feet per second with another 5 grains going to 40. And that velocity at 40 grains all on its own almost outpaces our duplex rounds over here. Interesting stuff. Now that this puzzle is starting to come together, and we have now learned that our 30 to 25 ratio that we've been doing over here for 777 is right in the lame section, we're going to turn things up a notch. We're bumping it up to 35 grains for our duplex, although we're dropping our W231 down to 2 for safety reasons. Now, 2 grains W231, 35 grains 777, 3F, now knowing that that's going to gain us, you know, a large jump in velocity, let's see what this does. And of course...
And here is our data point, our only data point, because the second shot unfortunately was an error, and I'm not making a second one to go back out there and retest it, because frankly, this video has taken me an awfully long time as it is. It's not all in one day, if you haven't noticed, and I'm just not going to do it. But we have one, and it's 1,222 feet per second, which, if we compare this load to this load using two grains, but 30 grains, triple seven, it is 117 feet per second faster. Now, if you notice, that correlates identically to our 119 feet per second gain going that five extra grains of triple seven. So adding more grains of triple seven is a linear increase even in a duplex round. You know, five grains here equals five grains there. You know, this test showed at least. I only got one more thing to do today. Now here's the last load we're going to be testing for this video, and it's a simple one. Four grains of W231 ball powder. That's it. With our 250 grain bullet. Now, what is this going to really tell us? Well, I'll show you after we get the results, which are coming right now. And there is our measly result. 405 to 530 feet per second with only four grains in the cartridge. Now that's a massive spread, but it's a very inefficient load. It's a big cartridge with only four grains in there. Yeah, you kind of have to give it to that one. But what I really wanted to know was if you take this number here, four grains, this velocity, and you plussed 25 grains in that velocity together, would you pop out what we actually seen over here when we duplexed it? And the answer is no. Now we should have seen, you know, plusing those two together, a velocity of either 1345 or 1448 feet per second. Well, we didn't get that. We are missing about 214 feet per second of efficiency loss out of this duplex round. You know, missing. So, you can't just take the two individual velocities, plus them together, and pop you out what it will do. So what have we learned through all this testing? A couple of things, a couple of key takeaways. First of all, as far as the smokeless load goes, up to about four grains, you do have a fairly nice linear increase per grain of smokeless. Yeah, you get a couple of little, you know, hot spots here and there, but for the most part, it's predictable and it's fairly linear. Same goes for the 777 in our case, the main filler of the duplex load. Whatever you, you know, it does regularly, seemingly, also will do during a duplex. So there's no real big funny business when you mix the two together, as far as we can tell. Up to about four grains, mind you. Because at the four grain mark, we really got some, you know, kind of weird results. I mean, for one thing, our 30 grain and our 25 grain bulk, you know, triple seven, along with the four grains, were basically identical. So there is clearly some sort of uh, inefficiency in burning happening here. Now, it's not compression related, because we got all the way up to 40 grains, and it, you know liked the compression, frankly, and it actually hated the, you know, no compression. It was just a pooch without compression. It needed more compression to actually gain a lot of velocity. The triple seven, mind you, is what I'm referring to. So it's not a compression issue. I do believe it's a, once you get that much smokeless on the bottom of the case, and I think it's just blowing the triple seven out and not allowing it to burn anymore. So up to a certain point, you know, your benefits just sharply drop. We've also learned that it's not as simple as just adding the two different velocities of the two different powders together. You know, you, we're missing a good 200 something feet per second from what technically is, I guess you could say, potentially there. Now, I don't know if this is a number that we can actually fine-tune and maybe gain some back. You know, if we mix around with, you know, different layerings of the powders inside the cartridge, which is another video we're going to do, because all of this was with the smokeless on the bottom of the case and the 777 on top. 
we're going to do a few tests to see if that's really the ideal layout. I mean, we're going to homogeneously mix the two powders together, see if there's any difference. We're going to switch, you know, swap them, see if having the bulk on the bottom and then the little bit of smoke that's on top will do anything. Uh, you know, we might even consider smokeless triple seven and then a little smokeless, right? So we're going to mess around and see if maybe we can potentially gain back some of this lost potential velocity. But so far, that's where we're at. And we have only used one bullet weight through all of this testing. Now, another thing we can experiment with in the future is seeing if different bullet weights will react differently with duplexing. Uh, a heavier bullet might you know, benefit more from duplexing than a lighter bullet. I don't know. That's more tests that we're going to do. This is going to be an ongoing series on the channel, testing out different layouts, different powders, different duplexes, maybe even some triplexes. But that's it for now. So until then, well, I'll catch you next time.